just block the trail so that nobody can come through. So that if they're on their bikes or walking, they'll know they're gonna run into a net. That happened. Says that this might be a good spot because the bats will kind of dive underneath that vegetation as they're bolting through the forest. If the net is ordered correctly, because often it gets, gets kind of disentangled. Mm -hmm. Are these just regular mist nets that I would see using birds, or are they a little... Exactly, those are yeah. exactly the same. Mm -hmm. For the bats. Mm -hmm. So, because there are some species that uh, echolocate quite um, fine-tuned, so they could detect this kind of net. If you want to catch those, you have to, to use other nets. Mm -hmm. You'll notice you can't see the net at all. <laughs> But it is strung across this space. Yeah, my name is Daniel Lewanzig. I'm from Berlin, Germany. I went to university, also in Berlin, to the Humboldt University. I'm here investigating bats and in particular what effects light, artificial light, like street light, uh, light has on bats. And I got, to, got um, interested in bats during high school where I met, met my supervisor, but already as a child my parents used to read and ch read me uh, read books about animals and show me picture books about animals. So my interest for animals in, in general already um, started when, when I was a child. And so I got into the study, study of biology and met my supervisor and he gave a very very interesting an exciting lecture about bats, bats in general, with a lot of nice pictures. And yeah, that's how I got into bats. And now I'm here in Costa Rica in the rainforest, which is incredible. And setting up a net, which is quite over, right over here, and got to catch bats for my experiments. This bat is a Carolia bat, I guess. Let's check it. Carolia bats are piper specialists, which means they're feeding mainly on piper food. The piper plants are pioneer plants that grow at forest edges and gaps. Therefore they are pretty important for forest regeneration. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when getting bats out, you first get the feed out of the net. And then you can pull the net over the animal, so to say. It looks like he's eating the net. Yeah, yeah. They are. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, alright. We used to have the diploma, which is kind of a combination of, well, it's just one degree, mm -hmm. the diploma, and it's kind of, you know, it's like the master's. It's, uh -huh. it's uh, five or six years in total, so it's bachelor's and master's combined, more or less. But they now changed it in most, most studies also to bachelor and master degree, to have have it comparable to other countries. Mm -hmm. Obviously don't like it. No. <laughs> because as soon as you say, well that's enough, we can get the net down. No, that, that's, that's fine, we, we often have them in the back. I, as, as soon as I put them in the back... I don't really... It's, uh, but you know, well. it's a leaf-nosed bat. Mm -hmm. Will he talk to you? Ooh, you can see those little teeth. Mm, okay, I'm sure. It feels like paper. It's very, very thin. Have, well. So see, there's the thumb. The ah, thumb is the only mm -hmm. finger that is, that is, um, you know, visible as a finger. And there are the other one, two, three, four fingers, forearm. Elbow over here. This Elbow. tail membrane and a tiny little tail you can see in there, which points out a bit of the, of the tail membrane. Pull the balls into their into their body. If you want to see if they are if they are active reproductively. I can pull them out gently. So, but this one is hardly active. It's 
So how can you tell? But there's a small ball over here, but it's very small. You can hardly get it off the body. You can tell if they are juvenile or adult by watching at the, at the wing. You know the junctions between, between the finger bones, when there's a white line, then they are not fully developed, which this one is. Haha. <laughs> um, that's much more convenient. I really very much love to work with bats because they are so cute and they are just amazing. There are so many species and they are so different. The only thing that I don't like when working with bats is you always have to work in the evening. You get out just before dinner when everybody else is meeting for dinner and sitting together after dinner at the porch. That's exactly the time when you're outside and get kind of isolated. And you have to sit in the jungle alone at night. <laughs> and you have to sit in the jungle alone at night when it's very dark. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Mm -hmm. so. But you kind of get used to it. It always feels kind of strange, but you can get used to it. Mm -hmm. Do you ever fall asleep out here? <laughs> no, <laughs> you can't do so. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great episodes in the Great Rap Wars was that we were cooking cinnamon rolls. We were making cinnamon rolls in the kitchen after hours. And so I mixed up all the dough and rolled out all the cinnamon rolls. I put them in the oven. I could smell this funny smell. It smelled oh, like hair burning. Oh. And I opened the oven and there was a rat inside the oven. <laughs> The worst of it was I got the broom and I was trying to get that rat and it got away. <laughs> With the cinnamon roll, probably it was. The cinnamon, yeah, roll. well, the cinnamon rolls were fine. Did you eat them? Oh yeah. <laughs> Just cut off the little marks.